In this section, I'm going to add a pump to the model and enter a pump curve for that pump. I'm going to switch off the background map so we can see it all clear what we're doing here. We'll just do the hide and the weave drop down. Zoom in a little bit to where we have our proposed booster station. See here we've set up an inlet and an outlet for the booster station. And right now we just have a straight piece of pipe going across the inlet and outlet. And that was for the earlier preliminary uh, model testing. Uh, we're now going to delete that piece of pipe and in its place put a pump. Which is a delete on our browser. And then we use the pump icon up here on the top of the browser and insert a pump across the inlet and outlet. Do note it's important that you draw the pump in the direction it's going to pump, i.e. from the inlet to the outlet, otherwise it will be trying to pump in the opposite direction that you're intending it to pump within your model, and that can cause problems. Let's take a quick look at the um, pump properties. Uh, these are the pump pump properties that uh, associated with this pump. It lists the starting node and the ending node. You can see they're correctly listed there. We have other other pump parameters here. Uh, we can add for the pump, including efficiency and price. I haven't actually worked with those, but they are available. Available. Uh, here's the pump curve, which I'll go ahead and enter a pump curve in my next step. Um, notice there is a section here for a pattern to be entered for the pump. Be careful of that. I've entered accidentally put a pattern in for a pump um, and it can cause a lot of problems um, unless you intend it to be there. For instance, if you put a community um, uh, peak flow pattern in there unintentionally, you can end up with uh, some real, real bizarre results on your model. So um, for a simple model like this, where I'm not actually doing any kind of variable speed or anything, uh, I'm not going to be entering a, a pattern on the actual pump. The pattern will go uh, for the community use on each of the nodes that represents a withdrawal part, a withdrawal point on the system, not on the pump curve. Okay, I'm now going to create the pump curve. And to do that, we go over to our browser window here, and we go over to Curves. And I've got none listed right now. I'm going to use the Add to add a pump curve, and we get this pop-up box here. The default name for the curve is 1. I'm going to change that. I like to actually use the manufacturer name and the model of pump. And in this case, it's a Gold's 7 Stage SVG Series Pump. And be aware that you are going to have to type this name in for the pump and anywhere else you use it. So remember, write down that exact name and the spelling, including all the capitalization, so you can accurately put it into the uh, pumps you want to associate with that pump curve. And this little drop down here, uh, you can actually select to put different types of curves in here including the efficiency, so that when you do some model analysis you can graph your efficiency of your pump along with the uh, flow and head rates. Um, you can also do head loss and volume. I actually haven't worked with those, but they are available. So I'm just going to go ahead and start entering the um, pump curve. And this is using information straight from a manufacturer's literature of the pump curve, starting with zero, the uh, static pumping rate. And wait for this particular pump. It's 318 uh, feet of head. And keep in mind that we selected with this model to use gallons per minute and feet for our units, although it doesn't actually display them here. And my next point is uh, 5, 298. see here the model started to um, try to represent a curve based on what we've entered. There are options in EPA net to do a single point and a two point curve uh, just by entering one curve point, one 
point of data, um, flow versus head, uh, or two of them. And they may be good options if you're just doing some preliminary uh, modeling and you don't exactly know the um, pump type you're looking for, but you have a general idea of what its performance needs to be. But for this demonstration, I'm going to actually enter in the full pump code. Here is 40. Uh, my my booster station is a very small booster station. And, um, pretty small pump in there. See there, we've got an error somewhere. Obviously, by the uh, somewhere at the 15 mark, we've entered a strange number. So we're getting this dip in the curve. It's kind of nice to have this graph to be able to see that. Otherwise, you might uh, miss it. You can see here under 15, I entered uh, 20 instead of what it should have been, which is uh, actually 265 into that, it corrects it, and we get something that looks very much like the um, manufacturer's pump curve here. Now, enter OK for that. And if I go back to my pump here, back to the properties, and in the pump curve, this is where you've got to be careful with the spelling. Uh, make sure you enter exactly the same spelling with capitalization as you enter the pump curve, otherwise it'll not recognize the name and you'll get an error in your model. And do OK there. And now this pump is set up uh, and associated with our pump curve, the gold 7 stage SVG. And later on when we run the model, uh, the pump will be pumping um, to that pump curve. Okay, I'm going to end this session right here.